All right, I have about 15 minutes time and we're going to look at OG BZM's Invoker. To continue this Dota's... Oh, let me move the camera. We're gonna fix that soon. We have to keep the minimap open, of course. <laughs> let me see if I can tile it in here. There we go. That should be all right. A little bit bigger, I think. You don't need to see the hero, I guess. I'm gonna see the level anyways. Play of you. We are looking at BZM's Invoker. Let's start a series. We've been talking about skill builds. We've been talking about items. The thing we are talking right now about is how to actually play the hero. And we want to start, look at the items, they're very very basic. I like the combination though, um, I think it's really interesting. I think even in his next game against Gaming, Gaming Gladiators, he went exactly for that build. Um, looks nice. I think he's only building one node talisman, which is nice as well. And as you can see, he's queuing up. This is interesting. Look, Tiny is mid lane, so we're gonna know that this Tiny is his matchup. And if Tiny is his matchup, then it means the bay lane is dedicated, or predicated is the word, on attack speed. Because Tiny has a huge attack damage, you're not gonna count to see as him anyways, but if you have the attack speed, you can actually outplay him. So he instantly goes for Cloth of Haste, which is actually really standard in any lane anyways. It's really helpful for Exhort because you have the damage. And then he's going for Stick, and then maybe Range Ops even later to survive the laning stage. And then, this is a great thing I think, um, personally I don't have to do, maybe in my games. He's going for Boots, I usually rush the Midas. I think if you're in a pro game and you have to have the movement speed, you have to be reliable to escape and actually to get some places instead of just chilling mid lane like I, like I do it every time, then you probably want to get the Boots. So, let's hop into the leaning stage. I hope the sound is alright. We're gonna turn up the volume here a little bit. Nice to see you joining the stream. Alright, let's get this doing. Blocking the lane. Very, very standard. There's actually not really that much happening at the laning stage. He's gonna play against Tiny. It's gonna be very stable. The main goal is to get level 8 as soon as possible because this is your power spike from your Quas and from your Exhort. As soon as you get your level 8, you wanna look to farm those neutral camps here. And if you farm them, you're gonna boost your net worth. Then you get your first items, you get a BKB, which is always great for Invoker, and then you can play. So we're just gonna look over some very simple laning stuff. What he's going to do is draw a lot of aggro, especially against the melee hero. You just wanna get a distance between you and the uh, enemy on the lane. So again, we see him drawing aggro, we see him looking top, because you always want to look for sunstrike opportunities, which is amazing on Invoker. And then, if the creeps are full HP, that's when you harass. If the creeps are low HP, that's when you draw aggro, and when you try to contest TCS, which makes sense. You can't contest CS that aren't low HP. So we see him, creeps are full HP, and he got five, six, seven auto attacks in. He tried to use a Forge Spirit and send it for the bottom room, but he was a little bit late and Tiny interrupted it because he's a really good player. And it's fine, we got the top room, the lane is at a great place, we just want to keep, uh, keep going because he's in the air. And then we're just going to see on how he's playing this. I think we skip forward at the laning stage a little bit because there are many specific laning mechanics that are like great to know for every hero and I don't think I have to involve that especially in the Invoker series. Just one thing you want to do with Invoker is constantly send out your Forge Spirits and control the power rune, which he's doing, um, especially against like heroes that have model, for example Tiny in this case. But yeah, you want to be as consistent as you can with it. But I think in the second game, or third game against Gladius, he did a better job at that, constantly getting the wave. And of course, I'm just a noob, I can tell. Maybe this is a, uh, a conscious decision, I bet it is, to actually prioritize um, CS over runes. But typically, especially minute 6, which is coming up right now, which is a great thing. Where is Scoria? I want to see his Scoria. Because what's happening at level 6 usually is that people get an Observer Board. Let's see what he just bought. Korea. Du, du, du. Ops, overboard. Of course. Why do we need a level, uh, minute 6? Because we want to see one of the runes, which is really important. If he had a ward here, he would have seen silence as there anyways, he would have checked the rune, and then you don't risk dying. But that was a great thing that he had boots there, because then you have the escape mobility, you have the movement speed, we have sunstrike opportunities, typical invoker stuff. So to break it down, you want to boost your net worth as much as you can, you want to control runes with the forge spirit, and then you want to hit level 8 and pressure enemy towers. And this is what we're going to see in this game. As soon as he gets a couple levels and this tiny actually tries to rotate, we're going to see that he starts pushing the wave. And if tiny leaves the lane, this is what you should do every single game. If the enemy leaves the lane, for example right now, we see tiny on the minimap. Do you see the minimap? A little bit. Let me scoot this over a little bit more. 
If you see Tiny on the minimap, you wanna go. There's nothing that stops you from taking this tower. And look at Tiny's perspective. Like, even if he gets a kill here on the offlaner, which is like unlikely in the first place, and secondly, not that useful, this is a Naga position 4, then he's gonna lo lose almost half of his tower because he got out his aggression. And as soon as Invoker hits level 8, you're almost guaranteed to lose a tower as soon as you leave the lane. So, the way an Exort Invoker pressures the map is by staying in the lane, boosting his net worth, and getting the mid tower objective. You don't rotate, you don't try to do anything crazy. Even if people dive, usually you don't TP to other lanes. You have Sunstrike to help, and then of course, as soon as you level 8, things change a little bit, because your double force spirit is actually super strong. But we see him just boosting his net worth continuously, he's taking this camp, this camp, he probably takes this camp, and then we head back mid lane, because there's nothing else to do. And then again, Tiny's missing right now, but we push out the mid wave, and I want to see how he does this. Look, he controls the rune, but Tiny's there already, because he's a decent player. He goes top, controls the other rune, but who's there? Enchantress, because he's a decent player. But the method still goes. You control the runes, and you try to pressure the objective. The next thing, a tip I can give you, especially with Invoker, you don't have escape abilities, so don't play in the river. As soon as it's minute 10, you don't cross this river unless you have the information that Tiny or the enemy mid lane or whoever threatens you is actually gone. And this is usually the enemy off laner or the enemy mid laner. Avoid the river. Alright. Again, this is great. This is really great. This is something we can pay attention to. This is, I think, a special thing to Invoker, but other heroes have units as well. If you have a catapult in a scenario like this, we know that Tiny just left into the top jungle, probably farming, taking rune, whatever. You want to protect this catapult. This catapult helps you to destroy the tower, which is your first objective right now. You want to protect the catapult? How do you do it? With Forge Spirits. You let the Forge Spirits tank. And off we go. If the Forge Spirits run out or get damaged, you cast new Forge Spirits and you send them inside the tower range to protect this catapult. Look, they even use Cliff to protect the tower, but he plays his Forge Spirit well until the Kree wave joined and now he still has a catapult and the catapult still hits the tower. And look at the amount of pressure that you can get into this tower. If Shadowfiend wouldn't have showed up, then this tower would have been gone for sure. And the next thing is if Shadowfiend shows up, then there is a possibility for your team to get kills on a map to pressure other objectives, as we see top, or to use the space to farm or whatever. Maybe even Offlaner comes, helps you to take the tower, and then Shadowfiend even dies. So give the enemy the opportunity to make mistakes, pressure towers if you can. Again, he blocked the wave a little bit to keep it on his high ground, and Shadowfiend is just gonna push it. What can you he do? He's a Shadowfiend. And then you wanna clear the wave as fast as possible, and then look for other camps, because there's nothing else to do. Alright, alright, we're well, going for the top camps because we didn't know exactly who's bottom or not. Makes sense. Always try to match where you're going to where the safest space on the map is. Right now you don't see anything here. You know your team is here, so you probably want to be closer to your team than bottom. Fair enough. We push out the wave again, and maybe Forge Spirits are just enough. This is another great thing with Invoker. Look, Forge Spirits alone just took a tower. Meanwhile, let's go over this again. Meanwhile, he's taking bottom camps and he's looking. This is the first action he actually does. He's looking towards bottom and he's protecting the area that he has. Invoker is a hero that protects areas. Like he doesn't push crazily. Never mind, Undying is walking up here. And Invoker protects his own farming space. Like if you look at the map, let's look at the map. He protects his own farming space, which is here, which is really efficient right now, because the carry is like somewhere else or doesn't want to farm there right now, and doesn't overextend on it on the dead lane. Meanwhile, he took the most important objective, and the next thing is the second most important objective, enemy safe lane tower is taken as well. So what do we do? We boost net worth. Right now is not a time to run around, to do anything crazy, or to make crazy plays or anything like this. Right now, even if you make a play, you're not strong enough to take Roche, maybe with Slaughter in this matchup, fair enough. And you're usually not strong enough to take tier 2 towers. So what you want to do is you want to boost your net worth as efficient as you can in order to get to the point where you can actually gain from winning team fights as fast as possible. So you want to be farming as hard as you can and usually for Invoker this means he wants to get BGB timing. How do we do this? We push out mid lane, you can even use a meteor here if you feel free. Um, but look how carefully he plays. Oh, this is crazy, good to see. This is why, why he's better than me. I think probably all of us that watch this. I guess so. He doesn't see anybody. The scan misses. And so he's just chilling. He's just chilling here. And then he even sits in the trees. Like he doesn't see enemy people. He doesn't know if there's smoke or not. We know that there's smoke because we see the, it from the replay form. But now they show up. Instantly goes to the wave. He's looking towards top. 
He tried to secure the region with his Forge Spirits, but they get killed from Shadow Fiend. But now he's instantly safe to farm again to get just his pattern out, and then we can maybe defend bottom for a wave. And now suddenly we know that people are top, and the wave becomes far safer to be at. And yeah, he's pushing out bottom. Let's see how long he does it until he doesn't feel safe anymore, which is pretty soon. Yeah, you don't want to push the next wave, they could all TP in. Now we see Tiny mid, we see Undying mid, fair enough. Shadow Fiend alone can kill us, and then look at this, look at this timing. We have the whole minute that just spawned, so it would be perfect if we would be able to take this camp away from Shadow Fiend, and this camp away from Shadow Fiend, and then all Shadow Fiend has is this triangle. It's not even that efficient anymore, look! This is actually the result of him being here, reading the situation correctly, that Tiny is here, and Shadow Fiend alone is not a kill threat. So you take away his farming space, and Shadow Fiend had to TP top, to regain any farm potential he has, but even top is controlled, so they're gaining net worth over time, and this is only due to his amazing understanding of where to be at the map. At this case, this is another great thing, like right now he can push the tower because he knows Tiny is not there, and he knows Shadow Fiend is not there, but we don't really want to be close to the tower, like it would be weird to see S the tower right now. The great thing about Invoker is, you can use Meteor and the wave is gone, and then you can go back to jungling, you can set more Forge Spirits, you can set Alacrity in the Forge Spirits, or even if you feel safe like he is uh, doing right now, if they like trade mid lane tower for it or anything, then he's just taking it with Alacrity. As we can see, this is something something other we have to really uh, consider as mid laner, I think in general, and as invoker especially. If you want to defend mid lane tower, you're not the first one to initiate on a defense. Like, if you're standing here, somebody's pushing mid lane tower, you're not the guy who runs in combos, five spells, and tries to kill one of them, because you will surely die. You're the last one to join in if you want to defend a tower. Um, if your off laner doesn't show up, you just don't defend the tower, like, that's life. But you don't want to feed trying to defend the tower. If a meteor wave is enough to just kick it out, fair enough, but if it's a full-on aggression, you just don't want to feed uh, trying to defend this. So we see his position, it's very careful, it's really far out, he set an ice wall to, to lock any TPs in, tower is still good on, what can you do? Alright, alright, so we're playing top a little bit, we look at his position again, it's wonderful, it's like on the hill, it's so difficult to go on this guy. His camera perspective is beautifully framed, like as you can see, he's not centered on his own hero, instead he's looking at the other people. Now he knows Roche is taken anyways, it's not worth fighting for it, instantly we TP to the other side of the map. If we TP here, we can push out this wave, maybe we can even push out the next wave if Meteor is off cooldown, or if you have um, Blast and Tornado combo, then you can get the wave as well. You can still look for Sunstrike initiations, and voila, suddenly you have the Ancients open. You know that many people are there, you know you just TP'd here, so if somebody wants to defend this tower, he's gonna show on the tower. Instantly you have the Ancients, you have this whole area to get again. And this is actually what allows him to get a BGB timing like this, because he's really really good at spotting, farming space for himself, and creating space while doing it. I think he had BKB in like 16 minutes, which is an amazing time. As soon as we pushed out bottom, maybe people try to react. As soon as somebody is out of position, we have the TP boost, we can follow up, that's why we always get it for BKB. Look at his position again, it's beautiful. It's really on the side, not risking anything, not using a thousand spells on one guy, but slowly, slowly, slowly getting through it. Alright, I have a couple more minutes. But this game, as you can see, he has 170 CS right now. If you manage this to get it in like even, I don't know, one out of five games, you just win. <laughs> you, like by default, you just win unless you major fuck it up later on. But with this item advantage, it's really difficult to die as an invoker. Look, another great read, such a great read. He sees the fight and he especially sees that a fight is over. Monkey King is dead, Snap fire doesn't get out. But what do we know? We know one, two, three, four, five people is, are here. If five people are there, where do we want to be? On the opposite side of the map, split pushing it, forcing people to go there. What happens now is that he's pushing this wave, controlling this top area to farm, and maybe even the ancients if he wants to, or if people react, he can instantly be bottom again in 30 seconds and he can fight an 4v5 opening. So putting pressure on the map is one of the strongest things that Invoker has to offer. And buying Blink Dagger, which he does, actually amplifies that ability. Because the probability of you dying with Blink and BKB and Ghost Walk and Tornado and Ice Wall and every defending, deafening blast and every defense you have is really, really low. 
and your capability of forcing people on the map is really really high. So you want to use your creeps as observer wards, wards, they're going to push the way for you, people have to react, if they react you have information. For example right now, they forced people top, they had to react, now you can instantly fight bottom, you set up maybe with an ice wall here, or he doesn't have mana, that's life, but as we said, like you force a reaction top, and instantly a fight on the other side becomes easier, especially for you as Invoker, because you can join anyways. He played it super smart, he played it super safe, really, really great execution. What do we do now? We probably fill up mana, because we want to be ready to fight. And then Hex is the next item on the list, which is like, that's a wonderful build. You can probably go this build 90% of the games. If you don't need an absurd amount of armor, you can just buy BKB or TP boots, BKB and blink. Good you go. And then Hex, you're you're really fine. Again, he uses four spirits. Look how great this is. Invoker is at the safe, safest position as he can be. He's with his team in his triangle spot and he's pushing out the wave. This is such a great thing about Invoker that people just don't use often enough. Pressure the wave. And suddenly you create another scenario where people might be being top. They might try to defend this because they see there's a huge wave incoming. Shadowfin could be like, oh, this is amazing amount of farm. I'm just going to go there. Well, if they do, they are instantly punished by the smoke. And we, can, we can see where the smoke is going inside the enemy triangle, away from the top area. Away from the top area, just countering this. And we see Shadowfiend bottom, which is great. Now you can decide whether you want to go in Shadowfiend or if you want to find something on the top area. Now it's splitting up a little bit. It kind of feels weird. Let's see what's happening here. Usually, usually if engagements are long, then they're not successful. So we see this. He presses BKB. He's like, ah. This. And now, what should we do? We should probably try to look to split up again because you don't want to have five people farming here. I'm interested to see what I do. Either they give Invoker the farm or they set Invoker again with his TP boots on the other side of the map. Maybe you get one more wave and then I'm really interested to see what he does. Monkey stop, fair enough. Now this need actually just vaporizes. You don't have to be on the other side of the map anymore because you don't want to stack together with your carry. So bottom is pressured and now you just take this bottom farm. Usually, if you're not sure where to farm, Wait 10 seconds and then it's gonna clarify itself. If monkey wouldn't have TP top, Invoker would have TP top. If monkey TPs top, you wanna take the bottom area. Usually it's not that difficult to see. Just you be patient with this. Don't don't rush into it and make hasty wrong decision where suddenly you have two cores at the same camp farming. They try to smoke again. Why do they smoke again? Look at the BKB timing. Look how e exactly they can time this and how they can play around it. Invoker has BKB down in 2 seconds, they can instantly go again. So they're looking for a smoke, last time they saw Shadowfiend bottom, maybe this is a great opportunity. They see Eng, fair enough, we take it. Invoker still smoked, we can either try to find a kill, or we can push the wave, which they decide to do, and then maybe pressure this bottom area. Even though bottom isn't the greatest, exactly, bottom isn't the greatest, thank you for TPing top, <laughs> because this tower actually doesn't offer you anything. You want to be in this top area, you want to gain control over Sean, you're going to want to control, to get control over the top area. Pushing top as safe as you can. Meteor blinks out, sees it perfectly. Tiny wasn't bottom, because he didn't die from smoke, he needs to be somewhere else on the map. So what is the most minimal play that you can do? Again, we want to look at invoker positioning. He's far out, like he's not the first guy to blink in. Now he blinked in, now he's looking for a hex, for an opportunity, but he's retreating. He's using EMP, and suddenly he gets a lot of more mana. This is what you can do if you're low on mana, you just press EMP. And nothing happens, which is fine. You don't have to force something every single time that you're in a game. Now they know Roche is up, interesting, so how do we play around it? As invoker, we just want to stand outside the pit and we want to press alacrity, unless we know that we can take it safely. So let's see at his position. Look how far out he is. He's just not the first guy dying in this game. And that's exactly what we should do as well. Look, 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 look. He avoided it. Beautiful. He was sitting up there. People tried to smoke up here and find people, but he's like, nope, I'm not the first one to die here. And instantly you can press BKB, you can press Hex, you can counter the crash that is coming out. You can use an EMP to zone a little bit and just play it slowly, slowly, slowly. Know your limits. Now this guy is dead, but probably, ah, not even. So we just disengage, which is fine, which is fine. Try to sunstrike, I get him. Nice. <laughs> and that's how it's 6 to 0. Like he just doesn't die, he's not the first guy to initiate. Now it's actually a nice time to take Roche, and if you decide to take Roche, of course you can go in now, because you know Shadowfiend is dead, and you can play for it. Now we see Shadowfiend might be respawning, do we really want to take this? We want to play careful, so we're not gonna force Roche, because they know they're up again, maybe we find a single target that's out of position. We do, we find a tiny, 
DP this guy, retreat. Like we don't greed into it. We don't focus, as you see, we never focus 10 spells on one guy. Play it calm and collect it and give them the opportunity to make mistakes. We're gonna refill in base because we have to fight for Roche soon again. This, for example, is not the time to split push bottom. Like, if you split push bottom right now, they're gonna scream, hey, Invoker's not with them, you're just taking Roche. So sometimes you're not really able to split push because you need to be with your team and try to read those scenarios. Usually it's around an objective. Try to press a couple spells. Just slide the rest. Alright. And now we can split push bottom because there's no objective to defend anymore. We can split push top because there's no objective. We have to go straight forward. Like, this is not contested right now. We can alacrity the catapult. Perfectly, perfectly executed, of course. We can see if somebody has a mistake. Clap. Easy kill. Now we get top. Now we might even get more because they're still bottom and people can interrupt the piece with Song especially, or Naga, or we can decide to join them. Like, we have many different options on how this game can go. And this is usually what you have, and to be a better Dota player means to do many small decisions, just better, step by step, with less, uh, with less margin of error. Maybe you can put it this way. And if you play careful and increase your net worth, look at this net worth! Like it is not perfect. What is it? <laughs> I'm just looking at CS. CS is my metrics of understanding how rich a guy is. But look at this! This is crazy! He gets Octarine Core as well now. And he's so deadly right now. He can just jump in, get some people. And I think this is probably exactly how the game ends. There, there's gonna be an opportunity where you just jump in, hex one random dude, and they're done. Now it's so difficult for them to catch up to this. Look at this, he's just strong by existing. Now probably go back base because you have TP boots up again, that's a great thing about Dr. Incor. And you TP up to it again and push out the waves and then you finally can take the objectives. Again, like as soon as people respawn, you have to be a little bit careful. But then if people are, um, if are, if they are single and out of position just like this, as soon as you have the network advantage, just TP to it, blink, hex, combo. That shit hurts, man. That really hurts. And now you can start getting objectives while they are still busy mid lane. And then once you push mid lane until somebody reacts, you counter it and you rotate back to it and are in the game again. So always utilize the TP, always utilize movement, don't try to be stale as invoker or stick around. Use your abilities to split up maps and then you should be fine. As you can see, people are dying left and right and sooner or later your leverage and your, um, your gold pool is just high enough to finish the game. All right, I think here they just yeah take the Rex, fight one more last time. And the game's over, GG. I hope you enjoyed this this uh, speed run on BZM's Invoker. Uh, I learned a lot, definitely. I always learn a lot if I do this. It's so crazy to see them how surgically clean they are. It's really, really amazing for me to see. Yep. All right. Have a great time. And that's it so far. Maybe we can get into the next part again. And I think in future I also want to get the laning stage video where I talk about specifically laning mechanics, about acro, which I see is not utilized enough, and cool. Have a great time.